Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. Having been appointed to the grade of ensign in the United States Coast Guard, I do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. The U.S. Coast Guard has served America since 1915. Since then, they have saved countless lives and contributed to the safety and security of the USA's waters. The Coast Guard is a part of the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. But during times of war, the Coast Guard may fall under the jurisdiction of the Navy. The Coast Guard typically conducts over 40 search and rescue missions per day. Individual members of the Coast Guard must therefore be highly trained to carry out these challenging situations successfully and will be enrolled in regular training programs to support their work. The Maritime Law Enforcement Academy offers the Coast Guard non-compliant vessel pursuit courses. These courses teach members of the Coast Guard to pursue and gain compliance of vessels in what the Academy deems as a safe and professional manner. These hands-on courses take about five days to complete. Coast Guards must also complete an instructor-led marksmanship course. Including annual 50 caliber machine gun training. At the Coast Guard station Ketchikan, 45-foot response boat medium crews practice firing rounds to simulate warning shots. This is typically used to communicate that an operator vessel is not correctly responding to commands. Unsurprisingly, if a member of the Coast Guard plans to be on the water, they must go through water survival training in addition to their other training. The course teaches various swim techniques and safety procedures for Guard members if they encounter difficulty in the water. Candidates have come to the Aviation Technical Training Center to complete the rescue swimmer training for over 30 years. One of the most challenging courses in the U.S. military. The swimmers here train to save lives in all sorts of conditions, including brutal weather like hurricanes. Rescue swimmers must even be trained in cliff rescues and emergency medical evacuation at sea. Training such as this helps to prepare Coast Guard candidates for strenuous and incredibly taxing water rescues. This job you have to disconnect. Uh, you do, based on procedure, you look at your functional survivability time, you look at the amount of areas searched, um, you put all these factors into it. Um, and you have to run through step by step, did I hit every avenue? 
A particularly challenging rescue technique is the hoist rescue. This involves lowering rescuers by cable from a hovering helicopter. Life and death hang by a thread for rescuers and their rescue targets as every team member navigate each incredibly complex situation. It is crucial for a Coast Guard rescue member to know how to deal with a survivor in various situations. Similar techniques are used when it comes to fast roping, which is imperative for candidates to know when pursuing a position in the Marines. Marines undergo 13 weeks of intense training. Fast roping is a technique that allows troop deployments from a helicopter without requiring that the helicopter touches down. Particularly helpful in urban settings where space is confined. Beginning in the classroom, the fast rope operator course teaches hopeful Marines 14 different knots and procedures. Position. So remember our terminology, we have the tongue. Okay, here, ropes, ropes, ropes. Fast rope is utilized in a helicopter insertion. Basically, uh, we can go into a village, drop on top of a roof. The helicopter never has to land. Uh, we can get out of the bird, go on with our mission. Frequent joint fast roping exercises are to be expected when part of the Marine Corps. Service members from the Kingdom of Thailand, the Republic of Korea, and the United States participated in a joint training session. They did a fast roping demonstration, showing the commitment to the long-standing alliance, regional partnership, prosperity, and security in the Asian Pacific region. Fast roping exercises are incredibly dangerous, no matter who does them. The fast rope insertion extraction system, or FRIES, involves a person holding onto a rope with gloved hands and feet while sliding down without any safety devices. Fast roping becomes much more dangerous if the person carries a heavy load. Pararescue specialists, or PJs, have a similarly dangerous job. Pararescue specialists rescue and treat military personnel. They are extensively trained in the usage of parachutes, scuba diving and rock climbing, covering even the harshest conditions, such as Arctic weather. They can perform both conventional and unconventional combat rescue operations. Due to the dangers associated with pararescue, training is essential. Pararescue men must be able to perform extreme and dangerous rescues at any time, even on the darkest nights. They must be able to rope, repel, 
and hoist from any vertical lift aircraft in any combat environment. An aircraft commonly depicted deploying PJs is the C-17 Globemaster. The C-17 is a cargo aircraft designed for carrying troops, trucks, trailers, and other military equipment. Specifically, they can carry 102 paratroopers, including their equipment. The maximum capacity of the Globemaster is just over 170,000 pounds. During Operation Panther Storm in July of 2017, paratroopers used the C-17 Globemaster for training operations. Panther Storm is a deployment readiness exercise, one of the multiple training exercises used by the military. Panther Storm is an operation that tests the 82nd Airborne Division's ability to rapidly deploy a global response force in only a matter of hours. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.